this. All right. Good evening. This is the April 14th meeting of the Inland Wetland Agency. Chairing the meeting tonight is Eunice Sutphin. Uh, staff tonight includes Bruce Lofgren, Linda Galetta, and Jeff Jones. If someone would like to address the commission under public communications, you need to raise your virtual hand. Um, in order to do that on an Apple device, you can hover at the top to find it on a PC. If you're on the phone, it's star nine. All right, over to you, Eunice. Okay, 701, we'll call the uh, meeting to order. Roll call tonight. Uh, so far we have myself, Eunice, we have Barbara Williams and we have Barbara Block. So we have a quorum. Uh, first is public communications. Um, Deb, do you have any public communications or are there anybody out there? I only, I only see applicants at this point. So. Okay. Then we will move on to the approval of the minutes of March 24th. Has everyone had a chance to look at those minutes and take a read? I'll entertain uh, a motion from you guys if, you, if I, if I have a, a suggestion. The very okay. last sentence before the we're at 10 adjournment in the uh, minutes, they left out a word. What word? Uh, aware. Make okay. her aware of. Oh, yep. Yep. Great. Great pickup as always, Barbara. Thank you yeah. so much for always reading those so carefully. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the minutes as amended. Yes. So moved. Second. Is there a second. It. Second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any uh, uh, nay? Any abstentions? No. So moved. So new applications. Doesn't look like I see any on this list either, Deb. No. Okay. Moving right along to pending applications. The first one is the uh, Kachmar Residence, Zero High Street. Um, so we uh, have had a site walk. We've had discussion. And um, it seems like Ed Wenke is going to join us for this. Yeah, I'm here. Can, I don't see me there, but I'm there. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Yeah. Can we hear you? Can we hear you? And we see your big name, Ed. Oh, you see my big name. Okay. I know there's a switch <laughs> there here somewhere go. that I can. Yeah, it, I just promoted you to a panelist, Ed. You should be able to do whatever you need to do. Share screens. Okay, I'm back again. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So let's see. There's a lot of talking noise. Yeah, the background noise. Somebody's got a yeah. radio or something. Yeah, that would be me. Yeah, we can hear that very well. All right. <laughs> well, how's everybody doing? Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. How about you, Ed? Good. good. When last we left it, um, you know, we had presented you with a replanting plan for that slope in the back, and. Uh, in as much as uh, you all berated me for the burning bushes, I, I actually caught some grief from uh, Chad Frost the next day because he was he was listening in on from for the next uh, agenda item. And, uh, he, he called me up to jerk my chain about that the next day, but I still like them burning bushes. But if you decide <laughs> to go with replanting, I'll change them out for sure. But last week I actually happened to be in town, and I actually so I visited the site. I actually got eyes on the site, so got a pretty good handle on what that slope looks like. And you're right, at first glance, it does look steeper than what the survey shows. But it really, I looked at it hard. It does come out to about a one and a half, 1.6 to one slope. So it's about the same thing we've been dealing with. Now, I know you all went out there and took a look at it since the last meeting. And Bruce uh, sent me back your comments. And primarily your directive was that you really would like to see that thing regraded. And so I revised the plans to regrade the slope. And... Um, what we're going to do as revision B. Bruce, did you get the plans that I just I sent them to you? Do you have them? Yes, I have them. I can uh, I can share them right here. Let me just. Okay. I, I have both sets, the ones from before, and uh, yeah, here are. Let me just make sure. Yep, here here are the latest ones with the regrading and the bench slope. 
so what we did was we eliminated all the all the planting um, and went in and regraded this slope as you can see, holding the toe of the slope pretty much where it is and then cutting the slope back so we got a two to one. Because of the vertical rise in that elevation, we have to cut a cross bench in that slope. Bottom line is we've got about 3,000 yards of material that's got to come out of this slope. And we don't have a lot of room to lose much of that on the site up uphill. So there's going to be about 3,000 yards of material being pulled off the slope, trucked out, and then hauled to a, you know, to a different location. Um, we can do this. Um, it's, it's not impossible to do. But I just wanted, again, I wanted to reiterate that we have a lot of material to come out of here. This is going to be done with an excavator, with a machine, and it can't all be done from the top. It's going to have to be done from the bottom as well. So you're going to have a lot more disturbance in that area than what we're originally proposing. Uh, the finished product at the end of the day will be a less steep slope, no doubt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once we get it to a two to one slope and remove all that material, grade it out, it still has to be topsoiled. We can, we're still going to have to jute net it. It's a two to one slope. Uh, but we can go with a single net jute netting on that instead of the double net like we had before. And then I still propose, I still specify on here to do a, a, a seed mix for that slope, you know, stabilization of that slope with uh, flowering species in it. But we're not proposing any shrubbery or any other kind of plantings in there. Just strictly the, uh, it's a no maintenance, you know, steep slope mix. So that's the other option we have here. So looking at this thing, I, th these are the only two ways to deal with the slope right now. We either plant it as is, or we do this regrading. Now planting it as is, excuse me, taking a look at it this week, I'm you know, pretty amazed that there really isn't any erosion on this slope as it is right now. And it's been there for a long time. It's been there, I, you know, I, I don't know how many years, but I know Safi wasn't responsible for putting all that material in. That was all Aquarian. They'd stockpiled it, they moved some of the stockpile, but they obviously you know, dumped a lot of it over the side. So that material has been there for a while and there's been no bleeding out to the stone wall towards the wetlands, really nothing. So that's, that's actually a really good sign that that stuff is pretty well stabilized the way it is right now. The only problem is it doesn't have the vegetation on it that it used to, but the vegetation was all dying because it was all filled. So I still think planting the slope is a viable solution. The applicant, Safi, is willing to do either or, whichever you, whichever you suggest. But you've got both options in front of you tonight. And we can discuss either or. Why did you say there's no vegetation there now? Uh, there's no vegetation there now because there were trees on that slope and there was brush and what have you. But when all the fill was, was placed over it over the years, it basically killed them all. So... There was a lot of dead vegetation on that slope and the applicant had actually cleared the dead vegetation off and that's what flagged the whole the whole situation of the slope being there and, and him working without a permit so once the once the vegetation was cleared off the slope he was like oh my god we got an unvegetated slope and then you know he was directed to stabilize yeah. that's right so and what kind of equipment um, are you expecting to get in there for plan B? And well, how do you get it? How do you get down there? You, you would get down if you look to the left hand side, you know, right where the right? crest is. The, Safi had already kind of graded out a little bit of a drive oh, yeah. going down there. That would be the machine access. And the, right. the machine would go down to the bottom and work off the bottom, bring the material out, and somehow get it back up to the top and get it to a, uh, you know, either get it with a loader or something. But it's going to be an excavator to pull that material down off the slope. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to have an excavator. You're definitely going to have a loader in there. And you know, you're know you going to have a smaller machine to work the bench. The bench, I think I've got an eight foot reverse bench on that. So it's only eight foot wide. So it's going to require a smaller machine in there. So you're going yeah. To have Are you anticipating a lot of rocks or? Yeah, there's going to be yeah, a lot of boulders large. in there too. And that's yeah. what we're concerned about because as we're cutting, you know, the original plan to replant this was to clean up the loose boulders on the surface. But as we're cutting this thing, we're going to be pulling big boulders out of there. I guarantee it, because I can see it. I would think there. so. And 
we've got uh, the silt fence and hay bale barrier down along the bottom, which Safi was actually installing this week when I was there. Awesome. That's all well and good, but that thing's, I guarantee you, that thing's going to get damaged many times over the course of this project. So they're going to have to keep stopping and fixing that fence because there's going to be stuff rolling off that hill. So that's the oh, reason why I was shying away from doing this regrading mm -hmm. as a first start. It just seemed like way too much activity and way too much disturbance. Yeah, I got you. So going back to plan A then, yep. and planting that, what looks like, you know, a much steeper slope. Right. You know, how's that going to work? Is, you know, is that all hand work? Most of it, most, well, the regrading and cleaning up the slope can be done mostly from the top. Basically, we're planning on doing it all from the top with, with an excavator arm. But all they were going to do with the excavator was just basically pick up any of the loose boulders from there. The rest of it would be spread topsoil over the top of it and then, you know, seed it in, in, in uh, jute. Metal. So, yeah, a lot of that would be mostly manual. Of course, all the plantings are going to be manual in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they they may have to use the bucket from the upper part to, to, to pop some of those holes in there. But, yeah, this this is so, by far less, less disturbance. Yeah, I see that, but sorry to interrupt you, but uh, okay. so in eliminating the burning bush, yep. so, you know, like woody plants, are you planting then some other woody plants in there? Yeah, uh, we, we, we can come up with a, some, some, some other bushes in there. Uh, when you say woody plants, we're not planning on planting any trees in that area. I no, think. I was thinking of shrubbery, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm open to suggestion on that. And in fact, Chad Frost said he would help me select the, <coughs> the right, right type of things up there if he made fun of me. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we'll, we'll get, we'll get you know, the, the right plant things up along the top. The one thing I wanted up there is I wanted some kind of bush along the top just as a visual fall protection too, because you know, it, is, it is still a steep slope. So you want to have something that's going to basically grow and and go up high enough so that people just don't walk off the slope. They're gonna, they're gonna have <laughs> a, a, a hedge type bush in there. Yeah. So I just wanna make some comments uh, based on what I saw at the site walk. <clears throat> and um, I just want to make the first comment is, is that actually along the property line, there seemed to me to be almost a berm that, you know, a little hillock that went, uh, higher than the slope at the bottom. Unfortunately, I can't read uh, what the, the contour lines are showing. I can't read those numbers. It looks like 40, but I don't know. It's not, not showing up. Are you talking along the bottom of the slope? Yeah, I'm talking, is that 40, line? yeah, 40, 50, something like that? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> again, uh, my what I saw on the site was that there's a, a berm, approximate uh, existing tree line. Um, and the berm was higher than the 40 slash 50 contour line. So that made me feel um, much more comfortable with uh, the, 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 obviously there's gonna need to be machinery down there to, to um, stabilize, change the slope from one and a half to one to two to one. Right. Um, and again, the second thing I would make the case of you know, the slope's been there for a long time and there is no vegetation and there's no vegetation on it for a reason. Um, and that's because it's so steep. Uh, and I just, I still feel very strongly that I understand that there'll be temporary um, disturbance, but I feel like that berm and the tree line and there was a stone wall, uh, I feel like there'll be enough protection for that wetland and obviously silt fence you, you probably will have to repair it as you were mentioning, but oh, yeah. I am still opting for um, stabilizing the slope at a two to one. Let me, uh, let, me, let me throw another wrench at you on this one. If we go, if we go with regrading the slope, I was looking at it this week, like I said, and you know, we we're looking at the amount of boulders that will probably be pulled out of the slope. Having yep. trouble hearing you. And so am I, so I'm, am I. I'm sorry. Maybe, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Better, okay. Um, yes. So anyway, we we're look. I was looking at the top of the slope. I was looking at the boulders, and I'm thinking, you know, instead of trying to haul those boulders out of there, 
If we pull the boulders out of the slope, we could line them along the toe of the slope, pick up the grade maybe about three feet along the edge of the slope, kind of like a boulder retaining wall. And by ah. doing that, we might be able to reduce the amount of material we've got to pull out because I can lose my grade quicker coming up the shoulder. I think that that's that that works for my mind. Yes. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, oh, Tom said he good. liked that. He said he could do that. It is a labor intensive process, but we got to get rid of the boulders one way or another anyway. And that's a good use. Yeah. So that's just another the, 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 this uh, slope detail that I'm showing on this Rev B doesn't show that. Because it's just something we were talking about this week. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. So I, yeah, you I, see I, where it says right there the toe of the slope? Along the toe yeah. of the slope. We could actually probably oh. pick that up a couple, two or three feet. And then the whole slope itself can pick up a couple, two or three feet. And we would reduce that much material to come off there. So that's the something I want to talk to you about too, is if you decided to regrade, I'd recommend that that's the way we do it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have a problem with placing those rocks uh, down at the, at the base there. Um, and then you're saying you'd go from the top of the rock, that would be your, the base of your slope? Exactly. Okay. And what, what, what we'd actually end up doing is pulling the material off the slope towards the toe of the slope to backfill the rock. And then we'll, we create that shallower slope, then we can go on the top and start pulling the rest of it back from the top. Okay, as long as none of that, then as long as none of that material is going to get past the rocks though, right? Well, that's the object of the exercise, yes. <laughs> it's always good to know the object of the exercise. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't always happen in the field, Ed. Don't we know this? <laughs> Don't we know this? No, exactly. Barbara Williams, you've been particularly quiet. Yes, I, I agree with you because if stuff isn't growing with the soil that's there, you have to change it. Yeah. Well, keep in mind a lot of the a lot of the stuff that died in there was because it was killed over. And it's I don't been know. there for a long time, and it was dead for a long time. So it's not, you know, but I will, I will tell you this. I mean, the, the material that's in there, it's non-homogenous, so I can't tell you how, you know, how great anything grows in it. Yeah. All the, all the yeah. plantings we we're proposing, we were going to open up holes for each one and prep them out for planting, that kind of thing, which would yeah. have certainly helped. But um, yeah. I just, I just see as you know, there's going to be some impact during uh, whatever we do during the, the construction time. And so I would just prefer to get this so it can grow some nice grass like you had, look like you had blue stem and all that kind of stuff. That looks awesome. Obviously there would be a caveat. There's no, we're not gonna mow the slope or anything like that. No, you know? that's the whole purpose yeah. of this man. Yeah. Somebody needs some spelling. Somebody needs some spelling lessons, though, on some of this. Barbara Williams, are you looking at the, some of these spelling? Just What's saying. <laughs> anyway, anyway, all good. Um, has staff, what, how's staff out there? I'm what, a what, on spelling. What did I miss? <laughs> perennial. Anyway, no. staff, what, what do you have going on, uh, Bruce? Yeah, sure. Um, so... You know, so the second option, the, the, the regrading, you know, it's definitely more, um, it's more textbook. Uh, it does seem to, you know, comply a little bit more with the standards. Um, but, you know, the first option, you know, is vegetated. And I, I can definitely say that, you know, when Ed says that the fill killed the vegetation there, um, I, I saw existing big mature trees on that slope covered, you know, four feet with, um, with fill. And, and that's when they started to die. Um, I'm, I'm not definitely not saying that the soil there is is too very suitable for vegetation at all, but I, I do think that the fill did contribute to the vegetation dying. But that was also one of my questions to Ed was, you know, is vegetation actually going to grow on that? Because it, it it seems very hard and and it doesn't seem like it will take much. Well, like I said, we'd, we'd be you know, over excavating each planting hole and then prepping that out with the topsoil and peat and what have you. To, to let the root balls establish. But anything's going to die when you bury it with four feet of material. That, that's exactly what's happened here. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, 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 I'd be, um, you know, comfortable recommending, you know, either one. Probably, the, probably the latter one is, you know, more, more, more um, in line with the with the standards of the guidebook. Um, 
I, I would suggest though, if if we wanted to change it with the um, with the rocks that the Ed mentioned and kind of raising up the bottom, the toe of the slope down there, do um, you think you'd like to see a new plan and and for them to come back at a, at a future meeting for us to review that one more time? Uh, I defer to you guys on that. I I mean, let let couldn't we just add a um. Well, let me just ask you. So, is it going to change the grade that he's showing on this plan? Well, it's it, it's basically going to going to um, pick the grade up, so that I may not be chasing. See that seventy? You see that seventy foot contour at the very top of the slope? Hang on, you just moved it. Just hand right down there. The seventy mm -hmm. foot contour. That's yep, basically 70. the top edge of your slope. Yeah, will actually be probably a little bit more towards the top of the drawing. It'll, it'll, it'll move away. It won't be cutting back towards the road that much. I don't understand what you're saying, Ed. Well, That's not, that I'm didn't sorry. make sense to me. Okay, the 70 is the, to is the, is the top, top edge of the slope. I got that part, yeah. Okay. So what happens is if we bring up all the grades, I won't yep. be facing that 70 that close to the road. It'll be further the other way. So further towards further towards uh, the root of the property, the, the, the slope becomes condensed. Further towards what end of the property? Towards the rear of the property, the top of the so slope. So the, the peace sanctuary, towards the peace sanctuary? Yes, but we're talking about the top edge of the slope. You asked me yep. if the, the yep. slope would yep. change. The, yep. the two to one is going to stay the same. It's just right. the, the width of the slope towed to bank is less. Yep, I got it. I, got, I think I understand what you're saying. Okay. Well, I, so I, I don't know. I, I like to just say, um, uh, with this uh, planting and everything, I have some concern about the maintenance after the planting, because you're really going to be stabilizing <laughs> that, that slope. And it seems to me that if there isn't some kind of a watering plan, depending on when this gets planted. Well, we're that, very specific on the actual seeding date. Okay. The, uh, the germination periods and the watering during that time. Okay, great. You know, obviously, I, I, we're not going to be able to get out there and water it every day. But no. the seed mix that we've got is, is a drought resistant seed mix. It doesn't require okay. a lot of water. Yeah, um, but yeah. And the seed mix is really what's going to be holding everything together. Yeah. So, to so if there's some initial kind of plan for once a week or something for. I think we've got something specified the, in there because. Okay. I that. Okay. That, that would I, I was concerned with the same thing. And I just wanted yeah. To it does Germany, otherwise all the money spent on this is a waste. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and we could also put that something like that in the um, in one of the conditions. We could say, you know, yeah. uh, staff could check it after, you know, one growing season, and if not, it needs to be replanted. I mean, something like that, which they wouldn't want to do because that that would be additional cost, right? Yeah, you don't want to replant this, no. Yeah, yeah. I think once that got established, it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, sure. keep in mind I'm putting new topsoil on this too. So yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. It should germinate, no problem. So yeah. We don't get a hurricane, you know, washout. All right. So the oh. slope you're talking about is after you've added the topsoil, not before. That's correct. That's your final yep. grade. Okay. Okay, how do you guys want to proceed? Do you want to feel like you need a new motion um, from staff? Do you feel like you can amend the draft motion and take a vote? Um, oh, okay, let's have a look at this. Yeah, so this is the draft motion I put together. Um, we, I, I think if, if um, you all are comfortable with um, with us reviewing, you know, what we discussed administratively after and just condition on that. I think, uh, I think we can do that. We'll just need to kind of draft some conditions to add on to this. So, Bruce, you're suggesting to add some conditions to this? Yeah, based on the discussion with with um, with Ed about removing the boulders and increasing the. Uh, bottom the bottom um toe of the slope height to kind of change the grades a little bit to be a little less steep 
Right. Uh, we're going to use up whatever boulders we have out there to do it. I'm not going to import boulders. Yeah, no. Wall. So we'll we'll pick it up as much as we can. So we're going to guess if we can gain maybe two to three feet down if we fell the slope. Okay, I get that. Um, so Bruce, you're you're gonna you're gonna have a different uh, motion than what we see before us. Well, that's what we're asking. Whether you're comfortable sort of amending this motion, yeah. or if you need them well, to draft a new motion. I personally yeah. think that the regulated activity, uh, yeah. grade slope stabilization, and construction of a portion of single-family home in the Upland Review area covers it. Um, and then the permit uh, that this, you know, basically, um, I think we should just maybe add something to say that uh, we discussed and um, agreed because it, it doesn't say anything about the rocks anyway. So we could just uh, say that we, we didn't tell them where to start the toe of the slope. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, in the first place. So the, the plan shows that, but we could yeah. um, have some sort of uh, condition number two saying that um, we discussed, you know, amending the plan such that boulders could be placed at the toe of the slope and the grade. Or could, or could we just say that boulders will be placed at the toe of the slope? Yeah, whatever you guys are comfortable with, you know, and, yeah. and staff feels yes. uh, right what if there aren't enough boulders to line the whole thing <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're do the best we can with it if not yeah. we'll just continue with the grading as originally proposed this is going to be kind of by the seat of your pants depending on what we actually what you find my, my my gut says we're, we're going to be finding enough boulders to do the job yeah yeah, well, again, and I just, I, to me, I just like to add condition number two that staff um, will report back to the agency, you know, so we've, we've set 90 days for this. So I would suggest that staff reports back to the agency in 45 days with a report on um, how things are going. And, and just, again, know that all eyes are going to be on this site uh, as we move forward. That's, that's, that's what you, I would say. Are you proposing 90 days? The project must commence within 90 days. All right. Yeah. Well, see, that, that's, a little, that, that that's a little. That's a little. Yeah, that's a stickler for me because, quite honestly, um, we asked that this, you know, uh, be done uh, a long time ago, and this has taken a long time. So I'm I'm glad you brought that up, Ed, because I think I personally think that the project should commence within 30 days. And that's even pushing it for me, but you know, I don't know. I don't think you want to be doing this in the heat of the summer by any stretch. No, you don't want to be doing that, obviously. I, I would say a fair thing is probably maybe 30 to 45 days. Because he's, okay. he's got a bunch of to line up and he's got a bunch of to figure out where to take the material and all that. He's already started putting in all the, you know, I don't know if he's finished up the sediment from the hay bales, but he was cranking on that last week. So that's a good thing. Okay. So they, I'd say, in all fairness, 30 to 45 days to commence. And okay. Then, you know, from there, we'll see how long it takes to actually get it done. All right. So we'll, we will um, amend the 90 to 45 to commence. And then we could add um, that 30 days after the commencement of work, uh, staff will report back to the Inland Wetlands Agency. So everybody, what did everybody think about that? That sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we should get on it too. Yeah. We're about to approach spring rains though. Well, in 45 days, it's going to be almost summer. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So planting in the heat. Let me go ahead and uh, make a motion. Uh, to approve Inland Wetlands Agency 20-04 of the Katchmar re Residence, Zero High Street, uh, for the um, grading, slope stabilization, and constructing a portion of single family home in the Upland Review area. So the motion is to approve uh, with number one, there's no loss of wetlands or water course. 
Two, the erosion and sediment control plan and slope stabilization plan will provide adequate protection for the wetlands during construction and will stabilize the exposed slope. We hope for that. The permit is subject to the four standard conditions and the following two modifications. One, that the slope stabilization must commence within 45 days of this approval. Uh, the stabilization and planting shall be in place and finalized by the end of the 221 growing season. If these measures are not in place or proved to be inadequate for slope stabilization enforcement action by the Inland Wetland Agency may occur, um, it will be um, reviewed by the town um, uh, planner, assistant town planner, Deborah or Bruce, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, within 30 days. Yeah, and and how about the report back to us. And, and report to the agency on said action. Do we need to do the two for about placing uh, boulders at the base toe of the slope? I, I would recommend that, yeah. Which is, okay, and number two, um, boulders will we be replaced? that have been removed as the material, um, it's a terrible wordy thing. Come up with something better there, Bruce. Well, I, I said that the plan shall be revised or should the plan should be amended to show boulders at the toe of the slope. Revised plan shall be submitted to staff to this effect. Good, much better. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion made. Uh, Barbara Williams, is there a second? <laughs> I second it. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the Ketchmar Resident Zero High Street. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. Well, bye Ed, thanks for joining us. All right. All right. Yeah. Until the next Thank time. You. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the second pending application is for 595 No Ang Ledger Road Septic Repair. Um, it seems like we're still waiting for input from Ledge Light on this one. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, so those guys, probably the kids will move out because COVID will be all worked out and they won't need to expand, expand by the time they hear back from <laughs> Ledge Light. Just saying. Anyway. Um, Okay, so we'll just have to wait on that. Uh, next application is for the sheep farm footbridge number two. And do we have someone here from the Groton Open Space Association? I do, Joan Smith is here. Um, I'm here. We can hear you, that's good. Okay. So, so in your packet, um, you'll see the material that we were waiting for. Um, there's a narrative um, that describes how the work is going to be done. There is email from the state. Um, they are the holder of the conservation easement on the property and they agree that this work is consistent with the conservation easement. And then there's also a letter from Trinkus regarding the, the flood zone, the work in the flood zone, and that it won't, the work won't significantly impact um, flooding the stream. Um, if you want, Joan can add, um, maybe she can describe how the work is done. Um, and I can go ahead and share my screen just to refresh your memory as to where this is. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, there we go. So it's, it's this area right here. It's the second uh, footbridge across Fort Hillbrook. Do you want to describe it, Joan? Yeah, uh, this is it's very similar to the footbridge that we did further downstream next to the waterfall, except we made it twice as wide. Uh, the original was only two feet wide. And because it's on a 12 foot board, it actually, you, had, you have the sensation of being higher and being so narrow kind of made people nervous. So we thought if we doubled it, and this will actually have a railing too, um, it'll be more comfortable for, and this will be our main bridge to connect both sides of the sheep farm and also to lead to the sheep farm south. The path keeps on going there. Um, we have a berm area just 
to the upstream of the crossing. Uh, it's a traditional Ford crossing where carriages would go across. So there was a, there's a line of boulders, flat boulders actually, almost like stepping stones going across the upstream side and then smaller boulders below. So it sort of slows down the water flow right in that area. And that's been like that probably for a couple hundred years. Um, and so what we are proposing to do is to have, it's a 24 foot log bridge, two 12 foot boards bolted with carriage bolts together. Um, there'll be th three, three rows of those. Um, it'll be bolted down with J hooks into a concrete base on either side. Um, that's the width of the bridge, uh, about a foot wide and six inches deep. And it's elevated. This is the highest point and the closest point where we could put a bridge. Uh, we'll have to move some of the boulders to give a little height to support the center where the joint of the bridge is. And there are boulders there. Um, it'll be mostly handwork, but we do we do have the use of a kabota, um, so that can go down the blue trail, and with an arm, he could actually move one of the larger. There's a big flat boulder that we could move up into place, and that would be about the right height to span it. And this this machine does not have to go into the water; it would be outside. Uh, but it has an arm that could reach it. And the rest of it is manhandling with uh, pry bars, uh, manual labor. Uh, and uh, because we're taking this higher area, uh, there's really not any need for any backfill. Um, if you tried to cross right where the old road goes across, um, it would be like four times as long because of the erosion that has taken place over the centuries there. Um, so, uh, and as, as uh, Deb said, we have the engineer um, statement that it will not affect uh, upstream in the event of very high water. And we've had high water, if you can see where the, uh, well, not on this map, but there's the red trail is higher up. Uh, in 2010, when we had that big flood that knocked out several bridges, uh, it, the water went as high as the red trail. And what would happen is the water would just flow around the bridge. Uh, and uh, the square footage, as the engineer had said, of the bridge is very, small and very, um, the water would flow through it, through the gaps. So um, that it won't be a problem in the, during a flood and the J bolts will hold it down um, and anchor it down. And we've had the same thing with the, the bridge downstream. Um, that's held its own during flooding. Uh, so great. Yeah. So it'll be pressure treated wood. Uh, that's about it. We may choose if we need to on the um, south side, put in a wooden ramp. Um, if the, the bridge, uh, the, the road is very rough and rocky and eroded and we may be, it will be up on land, but we may want to span that dry area just to go past the rocks that are there. Uh, but we haven't we haven't really decided what we'll do for a ramp to get up to the bridge from there. I mean, right now you can walk it, but it's ankle breaker kind of walking. So my only question, Joan, have, have you looked into other materials besides pressure treated? Uh, well, regular wood um, it would rot. Uh, cedar is extremely expensive. Uh, so no, we've really had the best success with pressure treated. It's not touching the water at all. Okay. It'll be up on rocks and up on the concrete. So it's not going to be exposed to the water. Great, thank you for that clarification. Anybody else have any questions on this project? Sounds all right. Barbara Block? No, I'm, I'm fine. I know where this is. <clears throat> it's the waterfalls are 
beautiful right now. I know it. So nice. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to make a motion? Anybody? Let me pull up the motion for you, just in case you don't have it handy. There you go. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the Sheep Farm Footbridge 2 application for the following reasons. There is no loss of wetland or watercourse associated with this project. The applicant has provided an engineer certification that the bridge will not have a measurable impact on the water surface, elevation of Fort Hill Brook, or on the extent of the 100-year flood plain. The permit is uh, subject to the four standard conditions. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the sheep farm footbridge number two. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. Okay, thank you. Can you give me a quick rundown on the four standard conditions? Um, sure, let's see. You have to file the permit in land records. Um, you need to let us know when you start work. Uh, the permit is good for 10 years. And if there's any sediment and erosion controls, you need to ask us to inspect it. Okay, so we're file, when's the deadline for filing? When, whenever, when we get it out to you, you can just put it on land records. It's the permit letter. The permit letter, yep. okay. And then I file it with you? Uh, with land records down at the land. clerk's office. Okay, downtown. Okay. Yep. yep. And then okay. you're good to go. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Joan. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Joan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, old... you guys for your service all these years. Yeah, yeah you bet. Remember you. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting you're any younger. <laughs> oh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any old business guys? No? Nope. Any new business? Report of chair? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any report. Seems like construction of the schools. I didn't realize West Side was going as much as it was going too. I was over there the other day checking that out. Um, they're still on track for opening in September. That's right. That's awesome. That's great. Wow. Yeah. Um, report of staff, anything? I don't have anything. Do you, Bruce? I don't have anything. Okay. All right. We'll just wish Dave a speedy recovery from that very painful thing that he has. Yuck. Um, all right. If anybody doesn't have anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Hi. Hi. And we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.